for the latch in the cloud. Okay, what we will do today? Uh, last, um, okay, today we have um, uh, 3rd uh, November. And uh, last lecture we have covered, last lecture we have covered what is uh, sigma algebra and uh, how we may generate the smallest uh, sigma algebra uh, generated by a list of events or a small sigma algebra generated by a list of random variables. Okay. And we have uh, described what is, uh, uh, what do we mean by um, saying that random variable X is uh, measurable, measurable, measurable with respect to some sigma algebra F. Okay, today we will cover expected value, conditional expected value, um, expected value of X given some sigma algebra F. Um, and we will cover uh, martingales, at least some general theory. Martingales, we will start working with martingales. That's the plan for today. Okay, so first uh, we will work with the conditional expected value of random variable X given sigma algebra F. Here, X is a random variable and F is a sigma algebra. As always, I try to convey intuition first. So uh, first, uh, I will give two intuitive descriptions, uh, and then we will go into calculations and formal definition. So first, intuition. You may think uh, of expected value of x given f. It's another random variable. Uh, let's call it x hat. Uh, x hat is itself a random variable. It's not a constant. It's a random variable. Uh, and uh, x hat intuitively may be seen as a uh, best uh, we can uh, give a very formal definition what way best. Uh, best guess uh, about x given information contained in uh, sigma algebra uh, f. Or also, we may say that x is a simplified. simplified version of X um, that is um, a simplified version of X um, that can be uh, that which value uh, which value can uh, is known is known given information in F. So first I will try to uh, calculate without formal definition, then I will give a formal definition of uh, um, conditional expect, uh, expectation. So let's work uh, with this in, in intuition first. Uh, let's start with a very simple example of uh, two random variables um, that are discrete and we have uh, a full distribution like this. X can be 0 or 1. 1 can be 0, 1 or 2. And um, mm, I need some probabilities. 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 1. Um, tun, 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 uh, six, eight, zero, two. Okay, 
yeah, I think, yeah, like this. And uh, uh, let's name uh, outcomes. Let it be outcome A, outcome B, outcome C, D, E, F. And my goal, let's first, let's recall something from past. Uh, let's calculate sigma algebra sigma of x uh, and b let's calculate something new let's calculate expected value of y given this information the first point a is something old just to recap a little bit and uh, point b is uh, something new okay let's start so what is sigma of x it's a list of all uh, events, uh, the knowledge um, about which is uh, uh, sufficient to uh, know the value, to state the value of x. Okay, so in this sigma algebra, I have uh, what events are in this list. A, B, C, D, E, F. And there, are... yeah, uh, basically, if I know x, I can say uh, whether x is zero, I can say whether x is one. So, events like x is zero, x is one should be in my sigma algebra. This is my knowledge. If I know x, I know whether x is zero, I know whether x is one. And uh, there are two trivial events that enter any sigma algebra. Um, these are omega and empty set. This is all. X is very simple, so there are only four events in sigma algebra that is sufficient to state the value of x. Or if you'd like, uh, write full lists of uh, outcomes, then it is uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, Omega is just a full list A, B, C, D, E, F. And uh, empty set is an empty list, like empty back. OK, basically, sigma of x is calculated. A is done. We are happy. Now let's go to, oh, I will need to copy this. Uh, let me. Right, so no zero one zero two zero two zero two zero one zero two. Okay, uh, so let's go on the next page and find something new. I will copy my table. Y is equal to zero. Y is equal to one. Y is equal to two. Zero one zero two zero two zero two zero one zero two. Okay, and now we know sigma of x is already calculated, and we need to calculate the best guess of y or simplified version of y given my sigma algebra f. So uh, let's call it uh, y hat. So y hat first the difference between uh, simple expected value and conditional expected value. Of course, difference uh, that y hat is a random variable. When you work with ordinary um, non unconditional expected value, uh, then it would be um, just a constant. And now it's a random variable. Uh, so we need to uh, let's um, write uh, all these events in a line. Maybe it will be a little bit clearer. Um, all possible elements of omega, I will list them A, B, C, D, E, F. All probabilities, probability of uh, every element is 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2. Now I will write the values of y y of omega, it was uh, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. I will write x of omega, it was uh, 
zero 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 one one one. Okay, and now I should write. Uh, and now I should write y hat of omega. So first, uh, idea that y hat is a random variable. So if it's a random variable, I need to specify each value uh, of uh, y hat. So first, first idea, y hat conditional expected value is a random variable. So I need to specify not one number but a list of numbers a function values for each uh, small omega okay but my version of uh, y hat i can consider it as the simplified version of y which is constant where x is constant so given my information uh, i cannot distinguish outcomes a b and c i have information about x my information is about x so i cannot distinguish outcomes a b and c uh, because i know only x and uh, i also cannot distinguish outcomes d e and f so uh, my uh, random variable y hat uh, will take the same value for a b and c because y hat is a my guess of y given my information and uh, given my information, I can distinguish outcomes A, B, and C. So the value will be the same. So let's write this value as, uh, oh, it will be alpha, alpha, alpha. And here I will have uh, beta, beta, beta. Uh, first uh, idea. Y hat is a random variable, so I need six values. Second, my Y hat, uh, should be I should be able to calculate the value of y hat given my information, but my information is not sufficient to distinguish a from b. So the value of y hat on a b c d uh, a b c should be the same, and on d e f should be the same. And now I need to find only two values, alpha and beta. And now here I should look uh, finally at y and at probabilities. So first. I look only at information I have. I have information about X. And now I look at uh, probabilities and uh, values of Y. So what are your ideas? How can I calculate alpha? So it's a best guess of Y, given that X is zero. So what is alpha? Alpha is expected value of Y given x is zero what is your best guess of y uh alex says zero six uh and how do you calculate uh, zero no six? we should zero six divided by zero point five it will be one point two Okay, first, Ruslan, A, B, C are not numbers. A, B, C are just names of uh, cells. So these are not numbers. These are names. Uh, uh, these are not numbers. I cannot add A and B. A is something like it will rain tomorrow. B, it will snow tomorrow. C, I don't know, it will be hurricane tomorrow. So it's not possible to add A plus B. These are uh, outcomes. Outcomes. Um, they are not. Uh, these are not numbers. Uh, probabilities are numbers. Values of Y are numbers. Values of X are numbers. Values of Y hat are numbers, but not elements of uh, elements of omega. So, by the uh, way, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, is this really legit to call y hat a random variable since it's just the expression of the expected value? Yeah, uh, no, uh, yeah, it's very logic. Uh, it's uh, a honest random variable because it has its own value for each um, outcome. Yeah, so but it's a does it really variable. have a distribution? Yes, 
you can write probabilities. You, yes, it's a honest random variable. You can calculate, you can ask question like probability y hat will be greater than one or expected value of y hat. Yes, it's a honest random variable because if we will calculate uh, these values, you cannot see the difference. Uh, it's like x, but with different numbers. So why x is a random variable? You have, what, what is a random variable? It's a function that assigns a number to each outcome. One number to each outcome. Maybe same numbers for different outcomes. That's okay for random variable, but it's a honest random variable. You can say uh, about uh, its expected value, variance, probably you can, you can draw uh, distribution function, if it's continuous case, uh, then you can draw uh, density function, not, not in our case, but in our case, you can draw uh, uh, distribution function. So that's a honest random variable with variance, expected values, probabilities, I don't know, moments, and so on. You can calculate what is the probability that y hat is greater than y, and so on. So it's a Does it coincide with the conditional expectation? function from econometrics? Uh, for the moment, I don't know what you call a uh, conditional expected function from econometrics. So if uh, you specify, uh, we are working with a general. Uh, uh, so yes, uh, the function you use in econometrics is a particular case of expected value, but you should think of, expect of conditional expected value as a random variable. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, let's go on. So first about alpha. Uh, there are many uh, proposals like, uh, um, let's calculate, so let, 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 let's look at our case. Obviously, uh, y is uh, between zero, or, it's zero, one, or two. So normally, if, uh, so let's, build intuition. So if x is zero, that changes my probability. Information changes my probabilities. So let's imagine that x is zero. Imagine that. So probabilities would change. So what are the probabilities of each? I will write it explicitly uh, to help uh, to build better understanding. But obviously, the case is very simple. And when you calculate a case like this, you may omit such details, but I will write the, them. Uh, so if x is y is zero, yeah, what are the probabilities? As the probabilities would change. So original probabilities are here. These are unconditional probabilities. But if you know that x is zero, then x is not one. So these probabilities are zero. Uh, if x is zero, x is not one, yeah? And the sum of probabilities should be always equal to one, okay? When we work with probabilities, the sum of probabilities is one. So um, it not, it's not zero, one, zero, two, zero, two. How we should rescale probabilities to have the sum of probabilities equal to one? How we should rescale original probabilities Zero, divide one. by their sum. Yeah, we, we should divide by their sum. So we should divide by 0 0.5. Their sum is 0 0.5. And in this case, everything is fine. The sum is equal to one. And now I can calculate alpha. Alpha is uh, uh, zero times zero one over zero five plus one zero two over zero five plus two, zero two over zero five. And it will give me, <clears throat> I think zero four plus, uh, uh, plus two times uh, zero four, I will have 1.2. And alpha is 1.2, okay? Everything is clear with alpha? Yeah. So Doesn't calculate. Happen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so calculate beta. 
what is the value of beta? Calculate the value of beta. Beta is expected value of y given as a possible state of x, given that x is one. So you, you can do it uh, very fast, but you can write explicitly probabilities uh, and using conditional, new conditional probabilities, calculate new expected value. It is one. Yeah, it is one. So I will write it's like zero times zero two over zero five plus one times zero one over zero five plus two over uh, zero two over zero five and it's equal one. Okay, so now y hat is a honest random variable. <clears throat> So now y hat, eh? y hat is a honest random variable. It is, it is 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1, 1, 1. It's a honest random variable. You can draw its uh, distribution function because it's not continuous. You cannot uh, find its density, but uh, uh, everything else is fine. So you can, for example, calculate probabilities that y hat is greater than y. That probability is that your guess is bigger than uh, the true value of y. No problem. What is the probability that y hat is greater than y? Just feel that it is a honest random variable. What is the probability that y hat is greater than y? Uh, so the probability, uh, let's just, uh, I will just uh, round events, uh, round outcomes where this happens. It happens uh, here because 1.2 is greater than zero. It happens um, here because 1.2 is greater than one. It happens there because one is greater than zero. And I think that's all. So I just add corresponding probabilities. Zero one plus zero two plus zero two. And uh, um, it is uh, 0 0.5. I can calculate uh, Ruslan, we are not working with uh, uh, equal probabilities, so you should pay attention uh, to these probabilities are not equal, so it's not like two over six. Uh, or you can calculate probabilities that y hat is equal to y. This probability, uh, I think only one, uh, only one outcome uh, satisfies to this event, so it will be just 0 0.1. Okay, any questions? Everything is okay, just please answer in any form, by voice, by writing, everything oh, yeah. okay, clear, anyway is fine. But uh, if uh, you do not answer, I, I don't know, should I continue? I, everything is lost, no more connection, internet is destroyed. Uh, okay, uh, the only question is uh, probably, uh, how did you understand the last expression? Uh, could you please explain? That's a question. Last expression, let, 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 let me number them. Uh, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D. Okay, which one should I explain? D. Uh, I need to find uh, outcomes where y hat is equal to y. So the question uh, is, uh, could, you I explain, could I explain D? Okay, uh, I need to find this probability. Let me look at the table and just let, uh, let me uh, find for Outcome A, y is zero, y hat is 
For outcome B, it's 1, 1.2. For C, it's 2, 1.2. For D, it's 0, 1. For E, oh, I see. Uh, y is 1 and Y hat is 1, and they are equal. My guess, Y hat and actual value of Y are equal. So, uh, and in the last case, once again, they are not equal. So I need to find the probability of uh, uh, outcome E, and the probability of outcome E is just 0 0.1, okay? Um, maybe uh, the last uh, question is uh, how to write the answer. If we need to, for example, in exercise, we need to calculate some expected value, uh, how, to, how to write down the answer. Um, uh, if uh, the set of outcomes is small, then you can write explicitly. You can say y hat of A equals to y hat of B equals to y hat first way. If the set of outcomes, like in my case, I have only six outcomes. So in my case, I can just say that for ABC, it's 1.2. And for D, E, F, uh, it, is, uh, it is one. Yeah? So first answer, if the list of outcomes is small, uh, just a moment, I have an, another more question. So first way to write the answer is uh, uh, when the number of outcomes is small, then uh, just for each outcome, I can say the value of random variable. The question is, why do we sum up initial unconditional probability in such cases? But it's a basically logic of probability. Uh, how to calculate uh, a probability of uh, uh, of some event? You should sum up probabilities of outcomes for this event. Or maybe I don't understand the question. Why do we sum up initial and conditional probability in such cases? Um, what maybe? Uh let me speak up, uh, speak up. I mean that uh, we have probability that y hat is more than y. Yeah. And how and how is it related with our initial uh, unconditioned probability? Just sum. Just take all, we have only six outcomes. Our experiment will end up by one of six outcomes. And probabilities are given, yeah? Uh, these are probabilities. Uh, of each outcome, the sum of these probabilities is one. Okay. Now I just uh, let me. Uh, okay, let me choose some colors. Okay, this will be green. Okay, this will be green. So I have these these outcome, and let uh, that one be purple. I just calculate outcomes where y hat is greater than y. In these three outcomes, y hat is greater than y, so I just add them up. These three outcomes, I add them up. Maybe I don't understand the question. Uh, I, I I have now found uh, the answer for my question. It's like reversed. Uh, so uh, if you have written p uh, from y less than y hat, I would have understand what we should have written. Uh, so just uh, probability of uh, random variable is less than some number. So y hat here is a number. No, it's not a number, it's a random variable. Mm. Once again, it's important to understand. Y hat is what? It's a random variable. What is Y? Y is a random variable. What is X? 
access random variable. No, you are wrong. First point, y hat is a honest random variable. What is a random variable? It's a function that assigns some number to every outcome. So if I can write the random variable, let, let's call it, uh, I don't know, z. What is z? I should have two minus three, five, six, square root of three minus five. It's a random variable. Why it's random variable? Because it assigns a number to each outcome. I have six outcomes in my experiment. They can be located in a table like that or in another table, it doesn't matter. But first, if I have a value for each outcome that it's called random variable, it's not a constant. And, that, and then how to calculate this probability? I compare for every outcome, I compare the values of y hat is a random variable and y it's a random variable. For every outcome, I compare. Uh, so I see purple outcomes. I have three purple outcomes where y hat is greater than y. But these outcomes have uh, different probabilities. So it's not like uh, just uh, three over six, just by coincidence, it's three over six. But uh, I add these probabilities, 0, 1 plus 0, 2 plus 0, 2. So how to calculate the probability of a complex event? I just add the probabilities of outcomes that enter this event, OK? Ruslan. Could you answer me? Because uh... Uh, I suppose that I have some problems because I uh, don't, I, uh, ca I can't hear you. Okay. The next question is from Alex. What's the difference? What's the difference between expected value of alpha, or expected value of a given x equal to zero, and expected value of y given x? given f because that one is a number it's 1.2 that one is a number and that one is a random variable that's the answer because i have a question from alex what is the conceptual difference between expected value of y given x equal to zero and expected value of y given f the values are the same the values are not the same alex because uh expected value of y given x equal to zero it's only one number 1.2 and uh, it, when i calculate expected value of y given f i need to calculate two numbers and to put them into corresponding uh uh, and to relate every number with corresponding outcome. Uh, can you show the uh, numerical, uh, the formula for finding expected value of y given sigma algebra? I just maybe not, not see or understand. Uh, we will write a formal definition. If you'd like a formal definition, then it's rather uh, OK, but first, understand. Uh, first thing that you need to understand, expected value of y given x is 0 is just one number, OK? Mm -hmm. Which one? 1.2. Exactly, you're right. And expected value of y given f, it's a function that assigns for outcome a, which number is assigned? 1.2. For outcome B, which number is assigned? Mm -hmm. okay. 1.2. For outcome C, which number is assigned? 1.2. For outcome D, which number is assigned? 1. 1. For outcome E, which number is assigned? 1. Oh, OK. One. For uh -huh. outcome F, which number is assigned? 1. So. One is a number, the first one is a number, 1.2 is one number, but expected value of y given f or y hat. It's a function 
So it's random variable because it's a function of outcome. Okay, let's so move it's, on. So it's, a, it's a random variable which consists of uh, expected values of y, yes, given a uh, event of yeah. yeah. In a simple uh, discrete case, you are right. Uh, the um, uh, in discrete case, you are completely right. Expected value of y given f will consist of a particular expected value of y given uh, x uh, is equal to a particular value of x um, with corresponding assignment. Yeah, you're right. But in a complex, uh, more complex situation when, when we have continuous distribution, but yes, in very simple case, you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, and the second way is like Alex proposed, we can say that it is uh, expected value of y given f. We can say it's 1.2 times uh, indicator that x is 0 plus uh, 1 times indicator that x is equal to 1. Okay. Second way to write as a function as a function of known random variable in this case we can even simplify further and we can say something like uh, something like uh, 1.2 minus 0 0.2 times x again simplify okay any questions No, clear. Okay, let's go on. Uh, yes, in discrete case, let's state it like a theorem. Theorem in discrete case. In discrete case. Uh, expected value of so f so what do i mean discrete case f is generated by random variable x and x has um, countably many values uh, f is generated by x x has countably many many values So oh, in this case, um, expected value of y given f is just a collection like expected value of y given x is x1 if x is x1, expected value of y given x is x2, if x is x2 and so on yeah that, that's fine okay let's move on to uh, something <clears throat> more interesting uh, for simplicity just a bit of notation notation uh, when i write expected value of y uh, given x i really mean expected value of y given sigma algebra generated by x so it's just a matter of notation when i write expected value of y given x and i mean expected value of y given sigma algebra generated by x okay uh let's uh, um finally write something uh, like a general definition because general definition it's hard to start with so we will like end up by a general definition so we have calculated in a simple discrete case and now we can state a general definition of uh, expected value so let me uh, i will not uh, I will not give uh, all of the 
all all the proofs but basically uh, let's pay attention to um, to the difference uh y hat my y hat minus y uh so it's a difference between expect or maybe another way let's write it like y hat um y minus y hat so it's y minus expected value of y given sigma algebra f uh let's pay attention to this uh difference and it will happen that so theorem uh, and in my case uh, let let f be some sigma algebra generated by x yeah it will happen that uh, so if oh, let's write okay. me how should I switch it off? Uh, Okay. Oof. So let's go to the general definition. Okay, general definition. General definition. Uh, the general definition is based on the following idea. If you look at the difference y minus y hat or y minus expected value of y given some general sigma algebra f, then this difference uh, cannot be predicted, cannot be predicted, predicted using information, information in f. Uh, so basically, idea is the following: the best guess of this difference, given uh, information in F, should be zero, because if the best guess of this difference uh, is not zero, then you should you can correct the guess by hat. So if the best guess of error is not zero, then you can correct by hat. If the best guess of this difference is five, then you can correct by hat by five. If the best guess uh, for this difference is some function of what you know, you can correct y hat given your information. And so basically, uh, as a starting point from a definition, we say uh, that first uh, expected value of y minus y hat should be zero. Um, covariance of y minus y hat with uh, any so let, let's call it some uh, so let me write here that is zero for any random variable z uh, that is measurable measurable with respect to f so basically this is a definition so the formal definition is like this uh if expected value of y is uh, less than infinity uh and uh, f is a sigma algebra f is a sigma algebra Uh, then, then y hat is called conditional expected value of y given f, provided 
two properties. This is a formal definition of conditional expected value. If you look uh, in a book by Zastavniak or some other sources, uh, very often authors even uh, write first point and second point um, as a one condition. So you may, you may even see in a book something like if, so first uh, we work with uh, uh, expected value of y is less than infinity, f is a sigma algebra. Um, then um, y hat is called uh, conditional expected value of y given f provided and only one condition is given provided uh, expected value of y minus y hat times indicator of a is uh, zero for any event a from sigma algebra f. So you may encounter um, a definition like this. It's even more abstract, but basically uh, these definitions are based on the idea that the difference between y and y hat cannot be predicted using information in f. And uh, the only point uh, in this difference is that it's very general. It can be applied in continuous case, in discrete case, in a mixed case when some variables are continuous, some variables are discrete. So this general definition is hard to, uh, to understand from a first sight, but the main use of it is that it's general. That is measurable with respect to F, Okay, let me let let's recall what does it mean that is measurable with respect to f. Yes, that is uh, measurable with respect to with respect to f. W R T. No, I don't mean set. I mean with respect to. It's a standard abbreviation W R T. Okay. Okay, let's go on. So uh, in a continuous case, uh, when two random variables are boss, uh, continuous with uh, joint density function. So let me state theorem. Uh, if uh, X and uh, Y have joint have joint density F of X and Y, then. Um, Continuous expected well uh, then uh, expected value of y given x is uh, um, can be represented like h of y big, where h of y small is just conditional expected value of y. Sorry. Of x, uh, where h of x small is expected value of y uh, given x big is equal to x small. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, maybe just to have a, th that's okay, but just to state uh, what is expected value of y given that uh, 
x big is equal to x small uh, is just an integral. Maybe I don't know. I don't like to turn the page, um, but I think I need to. Okay, just a reminder. Just recap. What do I mean by expected value of y? Given that x is equal to x small, it's an integral uh, y times conditional density of y given x small dy. So just to recap, what do I mean by this function? Okay, let's go on. Um, let's consider the properties. Properties. Properties of conditional expected value of y given f. This will be a big list of properties. First property is uh, let's consider two extreme cases. If f is just the smallest sigma algebra. That mean that means you know nothing. If you know nothing, then your best guess of y given f is uh, if you know nothing, then your best guess of y given your information is uh, Yeah, Johnny Beck is right. It's just a ordinary expected value. So you simplify the variable to the limit. So in our case, so just an example, in our case, omega it was A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, y was 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Uh, probability is uh, I don't recall honestly, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, if I'm not mistaken. And in this case, uh, expected value of y given just uh, no information, you should uh, uh, unite all the even, all the outcome in a big one block, one big chunk, because you cannot distinguish them. Uh, and in this case, you should assign unique number to all outcomes, unique number to all outcomes. The unique ways to do, the best way is to assign a, a ordinary expected value. So if you assign ordinary expected value, the ordinary expected value is, uh, uh, 0, 2 plus 0, 0, 6 plus um, t -t 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 plus 0, 6 plus 0, 2. Uh, I think it's 1.2, so it will be 1.2, yeah. No, I'm wrong somewhere else. 0, 2. Just a moment, Let, let's calculate expected value of y is uh, uh, 0, 2 plus 0, 4 plus 0, 1 plus 0, 4. And it's equal to, yeah, it's 0 0.1, 1.1, 1. 1.1, 1. 1.1. OK, it's one extreme case. The other extreme case, other extreme case, if um f is bigger than sigma of y so that means you know more that is necessary to state the precise value of y and you know a lot more you know exact value of y you know maybe exact value of z maybe you know something else then in this case expected value of y given f so you have enough information to completely exactly state the value of y. You know even more. So in this case, mm -hmm. what will be your best guess about y? 
yeah, Johnny Beck is right again, uh, because if you know why and you know something more, then you best guess about why. <laughs> why? Because you exactly know it. Yeah. Uh, okay, these are two extreme cases. Now, um, well, well, so something uh, in between, something in between, so like something between, so let's say the third property, uh, like between one and first, when you partially know uh, what you are trying to predict, you are trying to predict some random variable, but you partially know it. Normally, it's something like, if uh, um, you know uh, more than it's necessary to predict why, uh, but uh, the question asked is to calculate expected value of some function of y times z given sigma algebra f. So from this, uh, in this case, uh, your information is sufficient to explicitly state the value of y. So you know y, you know any function of y, because if you know y, you can uh, predict the cosine of y or I don't know y squared. So from your point of view, in this case, h is a known function. So you can take it out of expected value, conditional expected value. And basically it's h of y, but uh, you still have uh, probably no information about z and z will still be inside uh, conditional expected value. This is it. So if you partially know what you are trying to predict, what you know, you take it out and what you don't know, basically it's inside uh, conditional uh, expected value. Okay, uh, now uh, about something like boring properties. Yeah, we have boring properties. Boring properties. Uh, what do I mean by boring properties? Boring properties expected value of y plus z given f. Um, even I will add some constants, constants expected value of alpha times y plus beta times x given f is uh, something like expected uh, uh, alpha times expected value of so it's linear uh, in the first argument yeah beta um, x given f okay so boring property something like that what else um, something like um, first fifth block, it's like tower properties, tower properties. If you are like to calculate expected value of conditional expected value of Y given F, then you will obtain what? Expected value of Y? Yeah, expected value of Y. Uh, from the formal definition, it's just the first requirement in the formal definition, mm, but it seems more or less natural if uh, on average the weather uh, in uh, the temperature, let's say the average daily temperature is uh, 10 degrees. So if you, are if you are trying to predict, your average prediction should be 10 degrees if it's a best prediction, yeah? Because if on average you predict 11 degrees and the true value of uh, Y on average is 10 degrees, then you are, your guess is not the best one because on average your guess is 11 and the true value uh, of Y on average is 10. Yeah, that, that's, that's intuitive property and it's explicitly stated in the formal definition of Y. And the second tower property is a little bit more complex, but roughly it's a generalization of this one. If I have two sigma algebras, F and H, which one contains more information in my case, F or H? 
H maybe. Yeah, H contains more events, so H contains more information. And um, uh, expected value of, uh, conditional expected value of F, uh, oh, sorry, of F, of Y given F given H is just uh, conditional expected value of Y given H given F. And uh, it is uh, the smallest one that survives. Conditional expected value of Y given F So let's speak about the intuition and the geometry behind this. So I will speak a little bit about the geometry behind these properties. Uh, intuition is uh, goes like this. Um, first, uh, there are two guys. Uh, Fyodor and Nikolai. Fyodor knows sigma algebra F. Nikolai knows the sigma algebra H. Okay, so we have two guys, Fyodor and Nikolai. Nikolai knows more than Fyodor. Okay, and they are both trying to predict. So let's look at the first, first equality. Yeah. Uh, here, Fyodor tries to predict a Y. I don't know, temperature tomorrow. And Nikolai's, Nikolai tries to predict Fyodor's prediction. Okay, Nikolai, uh, Fyodor tries to predict Y, and Nikolai tries to predict Fyodor's prediction. So in this case, because Nikolai knows more, then he can exactly reconstruct the prediction by Fyodor because he can look, oh, I know what will be uh, the temperature tomorrow, but Fyodor is less uh, professional than me. He will not predict, he will make an error of set by two, and I'm trying to predict his prediction, so I will just uh, simulate, uh, I will just refuse a little bit of my knowledge, and so that's why it's more or less intuitive that it's okay. And uh, that part is a little bit more complex because here Fyodor tries to predict a prediction by Nikolai, uh, but because Nikolai tries his best and Fyodor tries his best, intuitively, instead of predicting the prediction, uh, Fyodor may just predict the weather instead of trying to predict Nikolai. Because if I try to predict the uh, forecast by, let's say, Yandex weather, for me, because I know less uh, about the weather, I have no complex models for weather, so I will just try to predict the weather tomorrow, and my prediction of weather tomorrow will be my prediction of forecast by uh, some uh, more intelligent uh, service. Okay, so let's speak a little bit about what else. I think that's all I need. Maybe let, let, uh, maybe you should keep uh, one or two lines, but I think that's all we need. Ah, no, 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 no. One, uh, it's a little bit more like uh, six. It should be placed. It's uh, something like uh, it's something like one. It's generalization of one. Yeah. It's one plus uh, the uh, more general version of first property. Um, if so, first uh, some definitions. So I, I think you remember when events are called independent. A and B are independent. If what? If the probability of joint action uh, is if, the sum or is the multiplication of their probabilities. Yeah, you are right. It's a product of their probabilities. Uh, we can generalize this uh, um, 
definition to sigma algebras. Sigma algebras F and H are independent if for any event from F or any event B from H, uh, A and B are independent because sigma algebras are just collections of events. And we can say this collection is independent from that collection. Uh, Pairwise, any event from the first collection, any event from the second collection are independent. Okay, now we can, uh, with each random variable, we can associate a sigma algebra. So when we say that two random variables, x and y, are independent, when we say two uh, uh, random variables, so these are events, sigma algebras, random variables are independent if sigma algebra generated by x, information that you have when you observe x, uh, and uh, sigma algebra uh, generated by observation of y are independent. And the last point is that you can mix sigma algebra and uh, random variable. So you can say sigma algebra and random variable are independent. That's correct. That's a correct meaning. At first, it seems that they are objects, different mathematical objects. How can sigma algebra, a collection of events, be independent of random variable? Random variable is a function. It's not a collection, but it's OK to say that x and uh, f are independent uh, if sigma of x and uh, f are independent. So in this list, a and b are just events. Uh, f and h are sigma Let me write A and B are Evans. F and H are sigma algebras. And X and Y are random variables in these definitions. Okay, and finally, I can write the property six. Let me write it clear. I will not turn page uh, to finish it here. If y and f are independent, that's okay to stay to say that the random variable and sigma algebra are independent. There is the exact meaning of this. If y and f are independent, uh, so your what, what what is the intuition behind this property? Your information has nothing to do with y. So you have a lot of information, but your information is useless to forecast why. So in this guess, in this case, your best guess will also be uh, ordinary expected value. So it's a generalization of the first property. So if y and f are independent, then expected value of y given f is just expected value of y. Okay. Yeah, that's. We have stated some properties. Now let's continue. Uh, we can create new objects. So let's create some new, something new, something new. We can create conditional variants. So these are definition. Uh, conditional variance of y given f is just expected value of y given y squared, sorry, given f minus expected value of y given f squared. And once again, this is random variable. Why it's random variable? Because uh, every term in this difference is a random variable. We can also create probability of some event given sigma algebra. It's 
uh, expected value of indicator of a given f and it's also a random variable okay these are new objects um Yeah, excuse me, when you say that the random variable is independent from sigma algebra, you mean that the process of assigning numbers to events and the set of events appearing are independent. Uh, uh, when you say that a random variable that uh, is independent from sigma algebra, you mean that the process of assigning numbers to events? No, I have an exact meaning, I have said it. Uh, so when I say that X and uh, f are independent what do i mean by this this is sigma algebra sigma algebra is a list of events this is random variable so i can assign sigma of x that is sigma algebra and sigma algebra is a list of events this is a list of events and uh first i will finish the previous question uh, diana or indicator of a is a random variable where is equal one when a happens and zero otherwise but we have already used this. Uh, I wonder why you have not asked this question when I have written indicator that x is zero. I have already used this notation. It's the same notation, yeah? I have already used, it's an indicator. So it means a random variable that is equal to one when a happens and to zero in uh, uh, otherwise. Okay, so in my case, when I need to speak about the independence of random variable and sigma algebra, first I transform x random variable into a sigma algebra. So I calculate the list of events that can be determined using uh, the value of x. So this is a list of events. I can, I'm sure about whether they have happened or not. And then I speak about the independence of these two lists. I say list f and list sigma of x are independent uh, if every event from the first list, from the list f, is independent from the list sigma of x. So it's another list, let's call it h. So it's a list of events, and then I just check whether each event from the list f is independent from each event from, uh, from, uh, from the list h. So that basically means two lists are independent. Okay, so and now let's move on to um, um, first our first uh, step into stochastic processes. So let's go into discrete time discrete time Martin Gales. So time will be very often in just ones, zero, one, two, and so on, or maybe uh, one, two, three, and so on. It depends on the model. So we say, uh, so we need to state two definitions. First definition, or maybe three. So first definition is a filtration. FT is a filtration. Filtration. Uh, if uh, for each t, f t is a sigma algebra, and f uh, s is uh, contained in f t for s less than t. So, what do we mean by filtration? We can um, imagine a rational agent. Uh, who forgets nothing? 
he has more and more information. He observes some new, some news. Uh, he so the idea of filtration is a evolution of information owned by a rational agent who forgets nothing. So he knows more and more and more and more. So F1 is uh, the information in F1 is uh, uh, is uh, equal or less than information contained in F2 is less or equal than information contained in F3 and so on. Okay, so it's called filtration. Filtration is just a sequence of sigma algebras. Then, uh, due definition, uh, we say that uh, so xt random process random process just a collection uh, just a sequence sequence of random variables of random variables x1 x2 and so on we say that um, oh, this is filtration this is a random process um, we say that xt is adapted adapted to filtration ft if for every for every t xt is measurable measurable with respect to ft so i have enough information at every moment of time i have enough information to state the value of x so at every moment of time i know the value of x and finally our last definition for today uh what is a martingale we say so the uh, the most important definition for us uh we say that xt is a martingale martingale with respect to ft if first xt is adapted to ft and b um for the best guess of xt given your current state fs is xs or s less or equal than t so if i have two moments of time s and t and my the evolution of my process. So that's the evolution of my process. So this is time. This is x, x u, yeah, u b u. And this property says that my best guess of future value of x, given my, so I'm not sure whether the process will go up go down i'm not sure but the property b says that my best guess is current value of the process okay so a martingale is a random process for each the best guess of future value is current value and the uh, during classes we will work with uh, uh, martingales we will check the properties check whether they proper uh, process a martingale or not and so on basically that's all for today if you have any questions then you have opportunity to ask them if no then uh, have a nice day so i just wait one or two minutes if there are questions i'm happy to answer them if not
Will you please one more time explain what means that XT is adapted to FT? Uh, first, you need to understand uh, uh, what is measurable to. If I have a random variable, one random variable, uh, if I have one random variable and one sigma algebra, this is random variable. So first you need to understand for one, uh, I have one random variable and one sigma algebra, not a collection, just one. What do I mean by X is measurable, measurable with respect to F? I mean that I can, uh, so it's written like sigma of x, sigma algebra necessary to state the value of x is less than f, yeah? Or even more exactly, uh, <clears throat> so I may say it like this, I may say it like this. Uh, we have given a formal definition one week ago, and uh, we may say like f, contains all the events of the form x is less or equal to some number a. Why it is so? If I have enough information in f to compare x with any number, I can compare x with 5, I can compare x with square root of 3. I can compare x with uh, um, 2. I can compare x with minus 1. So I know the value of x. Okay. So basically, uh, the idea of x is measurable with respect to f, that f contains enough information to state the value of x. Okay. The formal yeah. definition is like this. And now, this is for every moment of time. So if you understand the definition of me measurability, then it's okay. What do I mean by XT is adapted, adapted to FT? Um, that means X1 is measurable with respect to F1. X2 is measurable with respect to F2 and so on. That means, uh, when the second moment of time arrives, I have enough information to state the value of x2. If the time t equal to 10 arrives, then I have more information and I'm able to, uh, to say use the value of x10. If the moment number 15 arrives, I have more information and I can uh, find the value of x15, okay? Yeah. So adapted does mean measurable for every t corresponding. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, question from Simon. Uh, you said that the best guess for the future value is the current value. Yes, just interpret this equation. The best guess of the future value given current information is current value. I just um, I'm just reading this equation to understand it better. Best guess of future value given current information is current value. Yes, just to, I, I'm reading just the equation in B to make it more to make it more intuitive. Just not to expect it will be equals to random variable equation, but it has meaning. Okay, any more questions? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will send a recording and the notes. Uh, yeah, yeah. The question was, could you, could you send uh, notes? Yeah, no problem. Okay, so bye bye. Uh, see you next time. Just check uh, your schedule because we need to put uh, uh, missed classes. So check uh, your schedule carefully, obviously we will compensate for the missing classes, don't worry, everything is fine. So be healthy, uh, be brave and uh, have fun. Thanks, thanks a lot.
Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Uh, where will you upload the recording? YouTube. Oh, in the Telegram chat. Ah, okay, okay, thanks. Okay, let me provide the link once, once more, but, but okay. I think. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I please ask uh, very briefly to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, uh, do I get it right that uh, uh, as as soon as as long as we proceed with time, our list of events in Sigma Algebra changes, right? Or what? Uh, yeah, we have more and more information. So, uh, when I was a child, I uh, knew nothing about logarithms. Now I know what a logarithm is. I know more, but uh, my uh, knowledge is not a filtration because I forget uh, something. Uh, and the filtration, uh, the definition of a sequence of sigma algebras in filtration, we do not forget. <laughs> but basically, yes, uh, what is a filtration? It's a sequence of sigma algebras. First sigma algebra, what I know, what was the least of events that I'm capable to distinguish when I'm young, the least of events, which I can distinguish when I older. Uh, then, so and did I get right that uh, when we had like Martin Gale in the end, uh, like uh, for instance, uh, for F, uh, uh, we make a prediction based on today, but what, what this means is like, for instance, as we did, as we did in the first example, uh, we had uh, alpha, we, we had calculated alpha and beta, and we could not like uh, separate some events, some events from each other, and we had to like- No, 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 stop. First, first, moment. Wrong, wrong. Uh, first moment, Martin Gale mm -hmm. is a sequence of random variables. X1, X2, X3, X4, x5, x6, x7. Mm. Before this, we have studied only one. We have calculated expected value of y given f, only one random variable. Now we have defined a martingale, but martingale, it's not, uh, it's not one random variable. Martingale is a sequence of random variables. First random variable, second random variable. We need a sequence of random variables to call it martingale. Oh. And when we have calculated expected value, we have calculated only one expected value of uh, y given one sigma algebra f. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we have. Uh, First value of our process is random. Second value of our process is random. Third value of our process is random. So we have a sequence of random, of random variables. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Thank you very much.